Senior Life Journeys presents Carol Howell's Let's Talk Dementia, a podcast designed to help caregivers find knowledge, power, hope, and smiles in their dementia caregiving journey. Welcome to Let's Talk Dementia. Here is your host, best-selling author, Carol Howell. Welcome to Let's Talk Dementia. I am Carol Howell, your host. Thank you for joining me. If you haven't done so, if you're watching this on YouTube, how about subscribing and pressing that thumbs up button that shows you like us. If you're listening on uh, iTunes or any other format that you can leave us a kind word of review, that would just be fabulous. Maybe share it on your Facebook page and tell others about the work that we do. Well, today I want to talk to you about the size of the average brain, what it kind of looks like, and how the brain works with um, in relation to Alzheimer's type disease. So our brain is similar in appearance to a head of cauliflower. Now this is just a piece of cauliflower. I break it my cauliflower and cut it up when I bring it home, so I didn't have a whole head to show you. But it's tight-fitting pieces, and there's folds and craters and sections, much like what you see here in the cauliflower. If you'll notice, there's craters there. Now there's cauliflower on my lap, (laughs) but there's craters, there's sections, there's valleys, and that is much like the brain. If you took the average brain and you stretched it out flat, you rolled it out into one thin area, it would be between 20 by 11 and 20 by 23. This, oops, this is messed up here. Okay, for those of you who are on the podcast, you can't see this, but this is a piece of paper that's 20 by 11. It's a fairly good amount of area the average brain would cover if it were just rolled out into one flat piece. The average brain weighs about three pounds. Now, I'm pretty sure I know some people whose brains from the time they were I don't know. Hmm. Maybe in high school, their brains never did weigh three pounds. You know some of them, too. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) In fact, our folks with Alzheimer's, their brains no longer weigh that, so I should not joke. Now, here's a fact that I truly love. This shows you that God is good. The female brain is smaller than a male brain. Now, wait a minute. I told you it was good, good news, but before you men start thinking too highly of yourselves, Let me explain the reason for this. Let's go back to our cauliflower. The female brain has more craters and folds and valleys, and they're deeper than they are in the male brain. So the female brain is just more tightly packed. There is more area, surface area, because of those craters and valleys to hold that information than you have in the male brain. So the male brain may be closer to the 20 by 11 size, whereas the female brain may be closer to the 20 by 23 size. There you go. So, uh uh-huh, we like that, don't we? (laughs) So what we know with um, Alzheimer's type disease is in the very center of the brain is the hippocampus, and that's where Alzheimer's first attacks. Um, The first bite of the brain is taken in the hippocampus, and that's the part of the brain that helps us to um, remember new information. Anything you hear in a day that you didn't know, whether it's just in an uh, inconsequential things, but things you didn't know, like um, I need to move the pillow from the right side of the bed to the left, or something major like, oh, I've got to go to the hospital because somebody's sick big things. I need to pay the bills. Whatever it is that you have heard that's news lands on your hippocampus. And Alzheimer's has eaten the hippocampus quite drastically, and you cannot recall that information. So we've got to remember that when we're working with our folks who have dementia. I recently did a show called Early, Mid, and Late. And with very early stages of Alzheimer's, individuals will start having destruction or the eating away of the hippocampus as much as 20 years 20 years before they, the individual, knows something's wrong. And the individual knows something is wrong or something's just not right within themselves much sooner than anyone else knows. They feel it within themselves. I'm just confused. I'm having a hard time processing. I can't remember jack squat. You know, they know this. They recognize this. 
before their closest loved ones do. And then potentially their spouse will notice it or their uh, adult children will notice it. And then it just goes out further into their circle of friends and uh, more family members and employers or whomever. And then everybody knows. And the reason that happens is that hippocampus does become more and more diseased. As it becomes more and more diseased, it is more and more difficult for the brain to retain any information. So if we cannot retain information, we've got to pull on old information. And in those early stages, we can do that. We can pull on more recent memories, maybe last week or last month or last year. But as the disease progresses, our memories are lost in the reverse order in which they're gained. Our, our most recent memories are in the inner portion of the brain. Our older memories are on the outer portion of the brain. And that brain is being destroyed from the center where the hippocampus is out. So newer memories are lost before older memories. So realizing that will maybe help you understand what it's like to be your loved one with dementia. We've gone over this several times, but I've had some people lately call, write and ask me to talk about this. So those early stages of the disease are very difficult for an individual. If you can imagine every day of your life realizing that you're just not processing things like you wish you were. You couldn't do everyday tasks. You might find it difficult to remember you need to bathe or if you have bathed and um, you, you go into a uh, a building to do something, maybe to go to the doctor, and you can't remember what doctor you're there to see. It's more the large kind of items that we start seeing problems with, not the minute little things. We seem to, okay, we can handle some of those. We just start having more of the larger, more broad type problems. But then as the disease progresses, we start having problems with everything. In mid-stage dementia, um, as opposed to early stage, in early stage, we can dress. We may not always dress appropriately. We may not always, may not always be dressed on time, but we can dress ourselves, bathe ourselves, groom ourselves. But then in mid-stage dementia, as that disease continues to ravage the brain in various ways and various parts of the brain, we might totally forget that we should have bathed and if we've bathed, when it was and what is appropriate to wear and what is not appropriate to wear. Or we might forget to get dressed at all. Now, this is not like my friend Charlotte who called me yesterday and said she was in her jam jams all day long. <laughs> That's just a happy thing when you get to do that, right? But I'm talking about where it doesn't even ever come upon your brain, I need to get out of my pajamas and get into regular clothes. So we start seeing that. Then in the very last stages, we find, find that people cannot dress themselves. They cannot process that information of pull my shirt up, take the pajama top off, put on a new shirt and button it up because that's a lot of processing and the brain is damaged, it's drastically damaged and it cannot process. The, everything you do in life is a process. If we're talking about taking a shirt off, you've got to, I cross my hands and pull that shirt up. I, you may just pull your arms out, but you've got to get it over your head. You've got to pull it off. You've got to set it down. You've got to pick up a new shirt. You've got to put the new shirt on. You've got to straighten it and get those buttons lined up with the buttonholes. And then you've got that real small, fine work you've got to do of getting that button in the buttonhole. See all those steps you've got to do? Things that you just do and don't think about, but someone with advanced Alzheimer's, they can't do that. They can't process that. Um, the same is true if they're trying to feed themselves. Eating becomes a real pro problem with folks with Alzheimer's. Early on, probably not so much. About mid-stage, we start seeing problems with it. They'll forget to eat or they eat all the time because they can't remember that they did eat. Um, their taste buds are affected drastically and they want sweet and bitter. We have a hard time getting vegetables into them. They just want what they want. But in late-stage Alzheimer's, they may forget how to eat because you think about it. Again, it's process. You put a plate in front of them. They've got to think, I'm hungry. They've got to think, let me pick up the spoon. So the hand's got to pick up the spoon, raise it up, dip it in the mashed potatoes, raise the mashed potatoes up, bring the spoon to the mouth, open the mouth, put the potatoes in, close the mouth, take the spoon out chew the mashed potatoes, swallow, and hopefully it will go down the right pipe and we're not going to choke. All of that has to happen to get one bite of mashed potatoes in the mouth, in the belly, for sustenance for our folks with advanced Alzheimer's. But yet we see people just put food right there in front of them and go, here, Joe, here's your food, eat it. No, 
Joe needs a lot of prompting. You might want to pick up that spoon when you set the food down. And I do recommend a spoon most of the time at this point. Fork is, we're going to be too shaky and not steady and food's going to go everywhere. A spoon's going to uh, be easier for them to use. Pick the spoon up, load it with the mashed potatoes. Well, have, pick the spoon up and put it in Joe's hand. Put your hand over Joe's hand. Take that hand, scoop up some mashed potatoes, Guide Joe's hand, that hand over hand with your hand over Joe's, guide Joe's hand to his mouth with the mashed potatoes on the spoon in his mouth. Joe does not want you pushing your hand up at his face going, here, Joe, eat, open up, because that doesn't feel right. Nobody wants that. But Joe's hand coming to Joe's mouth feels very normal. That He's done it all his life, right? You're just helping his hand get there. And sometimes with our folks, if we get them started eating, we tantalize those taste buds, they will pick up and continue eating. But you better keep an eye on them because they might forget and they may take two or three bites and sit the spoon down and just sit there oh so lovely and forget that they need to continue eating. So we're going to keep an eye on them and go back up there and do a little cueing, a little prompting, maybe another spoonful to help them get it. Make sure they're eating off both sides of their plate. They may not be. You may need to turn the plate, especially if they have vascular dementia. They may only be recognizing what's on one half of their plate. So we're going to turn the plate so they can see what's on the other half of their plate. Just be aware. Be kind to folks. Remember, the brain is diseased. It can't do what it can't do. Well, I'm going to cook this cauliflower later today. You know, people do eat brains. But this is as close as Carol's coming to eating brains, let me tell you. My grandma used to fix brains and eggs for breakfast. Oh, 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 disgusting. They cooked them on MasterChef the other day. I'm not doing that. Oh, my goodness. You guys have a great day. Blessings and smiles. Let's Talk Dementia would like to thank our sponsors, National Association of Veterans and Families. You can reach them at 800-352-2919 on the internet at www.navf.org. They speak veterans so you don't have to. And you tell them Carol sent you when you call to inquire about benefits for the veteran, the spouse of the veteran, or both. Editor Beth. You can find Ms. Beth Crosby at EditorBeth.com. She is amazing at looking at what you've written and making sure it represents you well. Find her at www.EditorBeth.com. And HD Imports, located on Flint Street Extension in Rock Hill, South Carolina. That's York County. 803-985-0985. They are there for the hunt, the repair and maintenance of your Honda, Hyundai, Toyota, Kia. Tell them Carol sent you. Thanks for joining us today for Carol Howell's Let's Talk Dementia. To learn more about dementia, we recommend Carol's best-selling book, also titled Let's Talk Dementia. It's available on Amazon in paperback and Kindle versions. Be sure to like Let's Talk Dementia on Facebook and leave us a kind word of review on iTunes. Remember, knowledge brings power. Power brings hope. Hope brings smiles. And we all need more smiles. Thanks for joining us today, and we'll be right here when you come back to Let's Talk Dementia.